What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Daddy Jeep Garage. We're back on our one-ton swap on the YJ and we're now working on suspension. setting up on my rear axle I want this to match what I currently have because it works extremely well so link separation locations for all of my mounts everything I want to be the same I want this I want about to unbolt my stock stuff and bolt this thing back in with the exception of the stretch I am gonna cut off my mounts on the frame slide them back 10 inches re-weld them but all the geometry should stay the same that said Doing some planning, trying to figure out where my mounts, where my brackets have to go. I went ahead and I cut out some brackets uh, with plasma cutter. They're not the prettiest thing in the world, but they're going to work. So these are my lower link mounts. Going to go right there. Same spacing as my current axle. So next thing I was figuring was my shock location. So my shocks currently are mounted on top of the axle tubes, straight up and down to my upper mounts. Now to simplify things, with my stretch, I don't have a lot of time to be able to move my upper mount. So I think I can accomplish new mounts on the axles that are going to allow me to keep my uppers in the same position, but shift everything back. So that's going to require, I've got a three and a half inch tube. So it's so moving the shock from the center of the tube to the front is already an inch and three quarter. And I can angle my shock a little bit. I figure a couple inches of angle isn't going to hurt it couple inches at the bottom so that gives me three and three quarters so now I just have to make up that last little over four inches so I'm going to do that by offsetting my mount four inches forward of the axle tube so my shock will be a little bit ahead of the tube not a drastic amount maybe a little more than stock so we're going to make sure we build a beefy mount so again a stock type shock mount isn't a suspension holding device didn't come out right so a stock shock mount just controls movement but mine hold the weight of the vehicle so I need to make sure that these are super strong and not too much cantilevered force to deal with but four inches should be more than doable and again I'm gonna design this bracket as strong as I possibly can so with that said <clears throat> got me some more beer box Drew my three and a half inch circle to represent my axle tube. And we're gonna go ahead and measure out that four, four and an eighth inch, four and a quarter inch, I'm sorry, to my hole location. And then we also have to consider currently my shock sitting on top is spaced up an inch, about an inch. I'm not even gonna measure it, I don't care. So I think as long as my shock mount is close, so it needs to be either at the top of the tube or a little bit above it. So I think we're gonna go a little bit above it. Might as well go that same inch, roughly inch, because I'm again, I didn't measure it. So that means right there, axle tube, shock mount location. So now we just need to add some material, tie that all together. I'll grab my 911 Motorsports plasma template <clears throat> and I think that gives me a pretty good radius up top to make sure I have enough meat for strength actually that's probably a little big I think I'm gonna come in a quarter of an inch on that roughly okay so we're gonna come in there and then I need my straight edge, which is not here. So I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm going to draw a line down to my tube. And then do the same up top. That is the bare minimum of my shock mount. Super simple, but I think it's gonna do its job. I get a fair amount of weld surface around there. I will plate the bottom and the top. 
as much as possible. I think that's going to work. I think it'll give me enough strength. And uh, it should look pretty decent too. <clears throat> All right, shock tab. <laughs> and it almost fits on this bar stock that I have like I designed it to, which I, of course, did not. But it fits very well. It's going to sit on the axle about like that. Um, I'm liking that. That's pretty good. Okay, we've got the uh, Cut 55 running again. We're going to try to make these as nice as we possibly can. So I'm going to use my, again, my uh, 911 Motorsports templates to get these radii as nice as I can. Use straight edge for our straight parts. And then uh, hopefully we'll have some good looking brackets when we're done. break off but other than that really clean piece and it's hot so that's that guys I don't know how long that was 20 minutes again maybe I made four really nice clean brackets again the one I screwed up may have to remake but I love owning a plasma cutter and these 911 Motorsports templates make it really easy to make actually clean nice looking pieces so we've got all of our shock tabs burnt out. I, I went ahead and welded them together so I could drill the holes so I know they're all in the exact same spot. Now we can start cleaning this thing up and shaping it a little bit. I know the one that's cut funky, I'm probably gonna end up welding some more to it and shaping some more, but I'm gonna get these all as close as I can before we go any further. TJ has a belt sander. I'm going to go steal that. All right, so we're going to try out this belt sander and see if that makes this a whole lot easier. It might. part of the belt sander is much better. That's just slow. That said, we're going back to the grinder. Okay, so that's pretty good. They're not perfect, like I said, but they're going to be good enough. I'm probably going to weld a little bit on a couple spots up here just 
to even them up. Like I said, the one was cut really bad. Get my marker and go ahead and mark a couple spots and we'll make them just a little bit smoother than they are, but they're gonna have plates welded top and bottom as well. So they're getting pretty close. All right, so I've got my brackets all ground to match one another. I welded in some holes, I ground them up. They're not perfect, but guess what? That's okay. This is a rock crawler, not a show vehicle. So I went ahead and tacked them in place. I found a, uh, a spacer in the shop that's of an appropriate thickness so I can make sure my shocks are gonna fit in here later. So I went ahead and got them tacked on. Now it's time to build my plates, top and bottom, and then we can burn them all in for good. So I'm trying to reach in between the two as much as I can. I'm not going to 100% weld it in there, but every little bit's going to help because these are going to support the weight of the vehicle. So, so I went ahead and I clamped my spacer back in on the top to lock this in at the place I know I need it. And I went ahead and built myself a little filler piece in the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and burn this thing in here. Now that's a good looking weld. There you have it guys, one super stout shock mount. I'm real happy with that. I can't imagine that not being strong enough to do what I need it to do. And again, it's gonna facilitate my stretch. My current shocks are sitting on top of the axle and by moving my mount forward, it's allowing me to push my axle backwards. So I think that's a good design for my application. We'll move on to the next one. It's getting really late, but I really wanted to get this done, so I am tacking on. Actually, I'm well, probably just going to fully weld at least this side's lower control arm mount. So, again, I, I built this. I made a template cut out with a plasma cutter. I don't think I showed you any of that, but you get the idea. So, lower control arm mount. I'm running the bolt holes parallel with the bottom of the axle tube. Get me as much link separation as I can. I think. I'm a little bit short with my short truss, so I wanted to push this down just a little bit lower than what I have now to make sure I have good link separation. That said, let's get this thing burned in here. We have a little bit of cleaning up to do on these. Smooth it out of the pad, but they're pretty darn close to being ready. Of course, we're gonna mount them up right here on the truss at a 22 and a half degree angle, facing out so I can have my triangulation of my upper links, and then we can have this thing done. So a little more work, a little cleanup, we'll burn these things in. All right, so brackets are done, ground up a little bit. They're more than good enough for a rock crawler. So now we need to set up where they're gonna be on the truss. So I've already measured and established my center line. Now I've used my, uh, my little Starrett angle finder and set it at 22 and a half degrees. Uh, right on the center line. And we're gonna make a mark on this side. There, we're gonna set it at 22 and a half the other way.
All right, there's our guidelines. Let me put this away. I don't want to get weld spatter on it. Well, we know where things are going to live. We can just plop them on up there, align them to our lines. Something like that. Now we can just burn these suckers in. All right, guys, that's it for this 10 and a half. This thing is done and ready to go under the Jeep. We've got all of our suspension links done, uh, torque lockers installed, gears are installed, truss, all the welding's done, tubes are welded to the housing. This thing should be bulletproof, but we're gonna certainly push it to the limits and see if we can find that out. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, leave some comments. We'll see you next time.